afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Kerluck. I'm the Vice President of Investor Relations for Mag Silver. That's what we're here to talk to you about today, and we'll just get right to it. <coughs> so I have to mention the uh, cautionary uh, forward-looking statement uh, page here. But one of the things Mag has always done is our forward-looking statements. We've been fortunate to be able to turn them into truths as we go forward relative to discovery because that's one of the major things we are, our discoverers. So what is this? This is a decline. This is actually quite a nice decline. If you're familiar with declines and if you've ever been in a, in a mine, um, as you can see, it's, uh, it's shock created. It's actually double shock created. It's bolted. But at the same time, you can see the floor is pretty nice. It looks like something maybe like a, a Swiss tunnel or maybe something you drive your Ferrari down. Um, the reason we show you this is, is quite simply. We're partnered with Fresnil, the world's primary largest silver producer. And no one builds a mine like this or a decline to a mine like this if you don't have commitment to the project and showing the quality of your work. In addition to that is the cost. So first of all, you have this leading uh, silver company with a, a $12 billion market cap, which is Fresnil, our partner and they're building this for us. If you were to build something like this in Quebec, Nevada, Ontario, without a concrete floor, it would cost you about $4,000 a meter. Here, these guys have got a 25 centimeter concrete floor for 3,500 meters of decline thus far, and it's calling, costing us half that. It's costing us under $2,000 a meter. So not only do we have commitment to the project, not only do we have a quality builder, an operator, but we have them doing it at half the cost of any other guy out there. So what is Mag Silver? Mag Silver started in 2003, started with high grade, high return on your money, high IRR, and of course district scale so that that capital investment lasts a long time. Of course when you go searching for silver in Mexico, I, uh, you find lead, zinc and gold along with it, and we'll talk about that. But the main asset we have is our Juan Escipio asset, it's in Zacatecas State, we have 44% of the project, and Fresnil, that large company I was talking about, has 56% of it. They're the operator, as I mentioned. But what we have is the world's highest grade developing silver asset. That's what MAG has, and Fresnil is developing it for us. So we have 145 million ounces of silver at 550 grams per ton silver alone. We have an, and that's indicated. Uh, we have 41 million ounces of silver at 648 grams per ton. Needless to say, that those are some pretty high grades. Pretty much, I'd say about three times the average of the silver companies out there if you were to put them right across the board. In addition to that, as you go deeper in these vertical epithermal vein systems that we have, since silver is high at the top, the silver wanes as you main, uh, go down, uh, as you mine down them, and, as, uh, and the base metals come in. So you can see that at the top, we have uh, close to a billion ounces of lead and zinc, but as you head down to the bottom, you can see we have two and a half million, billion pounds of lead and zinc. So we have an after-tax IR of 44%, and now we've just, with our new PEA, have upgraded our throughput from 2650 tons a day to 4,000 tons a day, and the mine life actually increased on top of that because we continue to find more and more. We've got a strong financial position. We have about 160 million US in the bank and we have no debt. We have 84, uh, 85 million shares out. That's never been consolidated. We've raised over $300 million on that share. So we're very discerning and very respective of dilution for our shareholders and uh, we move forward with that. Right now, we're about a $1.3 billion company, and our shares are down at $15. So this is where we are. I was talking about the success of Discovery. We're in uh, Zacatecas State. We've had uh, five discoveries on this property alone in the last 14 years, and we've had an additional three other discoveries on another property. So if you're looking for silver in the world, you go to Mexico. If you're looking for silver in Mexico, you go to the Fresnil silver trend. And if you're looking for Fres uh, silver in Fresnil silver trend, you go to the Fresnil silver district. And that's exactly where we are. We are, we are in the preeminent district for silver in the world today. As you can see, the pink sort of salmon out there 
is uh, Fresnel Tenements, and the blue, which is right, right there, is the JV. So let's zoom in to that upper right-hand corner, just so you can see right in this upper right-hand corner. That's what we've done. We've explored this area right here. So our first drill hole in 2003, right here, what we call the Juanacipio vein, because there's the Juanacipio vein, and then there's the Valdeconis vein. Juanacipio vein, hole 001, we hit mineralization. 16 holes later, we hit the Valdeconis vein. Valdeconis vein is 90% of the value of today's company, right there. From here to here, that's 1.5 kilometers. Over here, they've been mining the same vein for the last five years, four and a half, five years. This is Fresnel, this is all Fresnel's area, and they've built two mines here in the last 10 years on time, on budget. So, before we got there, they had tried to drill here and hadn't found anything. Once they understood our geological thesis here on, on us discovering our holes on our property, they came back here, drilled down some of the same collars that they had drilled before, and they found an additional 650 million ounces of silver in this area. They continue to, go up to march down this way and find more and more mineralization, and those veins are only going to come over onto our property, and I'll talk about that in the future. So this is the uh, upper zone, the Bonanza zone, that is going into production, but we've continued to drill below, and we found more and more and more. So that's where we've gone from 2,650 tons a day to 4,000 tons a day. What does that mean? That means more throughput, more cash flow. So these are our grades, as you can see. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, 8 million tons of 550, 6, uh, 648, and it goes on. The other thing you can see here is our global resource. We have indicated 13 million tons of indicated resource, and we have 12 million tons of inferred resource. So as I mentioned earlier, <coughs> we have the higher upper upper zone, which we call the Bonanza zone, and that's where you have your higher grade silver and your lower grades of zinc and lead. Gold is pretty consistent throughout. We have a resource now of about uh, over a million ounces of silver alone, which actually attributes to about 7% of revenue. Um, there's, uh, the Bonanza zone has a higher indicated. The deep zone has a higher inferred. The average thickness on the upper zone, the Bonanza zone, the high grade silver zone is six meters wide. On the deep zone, the, the, the mineralization actually goes from six meters and into some areas 30 meters wide of true thickness mineralization. So it's very significant. And it's open at depth. So this is a comparison of our PEA. Some of the people who are technical in here and who need some uh, specific numbers, this is our 2012 and this is our, our 2017. So you can see the IRR after tax is 43 to 44%, that's after tax numbers. Our AISC, our all-in sustaining cost, is $5.02 an ounce. Very important number to know. Our throughput has gone up from 2650 to 4,000 tons a day, and as you can see, this, is, this one was done at 23 silver at 2012, and this is done now at 18 silver, and our, <coughs> our returns are still the same amount with the with the, gray, uh, the silver grade going down significantly. Silver price, excuse me, going down. Okay, this, oh there, okay. Wasn't advancing there for me. So this is where we are on the development. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We started in, uh, I think about 2013, 2014 on the decline. We're twinning the decline now. Ventilation has gone in. We're going into production in 2020. And of course, we started a lot of the underground infrastructure. This is the decline that is 3,500 meters long, that nice little tunnel I showed you earlier. And we're currently twinning it, and it should be done quite quickly. This is where the asset is, and this is where we'll start our development going forward once we reach the bottom with the twinning. Another important part of uh, <coughs> mining, of course, is mineral processing, i.e. your recovery. Not just what you have in the ground down there, and everyone tries to impress you with big ounces, but how much of that are you actually going to get out and put in people's pockets? So you can see our silver recovery is 95%, gold 82, lead and zinc 93 and 90 respectively. So surface infrastructure, a lot of people want to know where we are, what we're doing. So 
or, or what we call, do we have all the surface structure? So we have a two-lane road built on the property already for uh, access for our trucks. We have power supplied by the local grid. We've got water. And of course, we have lots of uh, locations for our tailing facility. So for the people who are a little more specific and a little more number-oriented, you can see on-site operating costs at uh, $59 a ton. And then down here for off-site, $40, $41 per ton. And out of coincidence, if you add those two numbers, it goes 99.99. I don't know why, but it does. <coughs> so again, this is numbers, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what the old PEA looks like and what the new PEA looks like. So what I did, I mean, these are the numbers for the new PEA, but it's hard to compare them. So I simply went over here and I did both PEAs with the same price of silver. So you would know. A lot of people are familiar with the old one at 23 silver. So we simply put the same number. So you can see how the new 4,000 tons of the day, the new project, the new PEA compares to the old one. So we increase throughput, so you're going to be generating more cash flow, but the numbers are even better economically because if you were to compare them on the same basis. So let's look at our after-tax IRR right there. You can see here it's 56, I think. I, I, it's hard for me to read. I think it's 56, 58. And um, here it's, it's, it's 43. So if you were to give the, the, the 2017 the same number inputs as uh, the 2012, that's what your IRR would be. So needless to say, the, by us improving or increasing throughput, the project has actually gotten better. So <clears throat> the, there are some major things in the PEA that are really important to understand. All-in sustaining costs are at $5 <laughs> an ounce, which is, I, is very hard to say because it's, it's almost unbelievable for me because it's, the margins are so phenomenal. We've also increased the project to 4,000 tons a day. Uh, we've increased and, and done a lot of things uh, like put an underground conveyor system, an underground crusher system, it's, uh, it keeps it safe, we're gonna put in an internal shaft. All these things are incorporated in the pricing and we have financed for it too. So we're financed for the project going forward. And of course, the economics which I've already talked about. So from an investor's point of view, what we've tried to do is reduce risk as much as possible. And the way you reduce risk is by addressing questions like metallurgy. Metallurgy is that recovery, I said, those 90% 95 silver, 82 gold, 93 and 90 uh, lead and zinc. What that means is we're not changing from a little beaker in a lab. What, where we're getting those numbers is two kilometers away. Fresneo has a plant operating and are going to build us the same plant. So those numbers are real. Those risks are mitigated significantly. And then you can go through them all. We own the property. We have the highest grade. We're fully financed. We're in Mexico. We, we have the best developer out there. And the other thing I wanted to talk to you about this afternoon is the significant upside of what we have. So I've just explained to you basically what we have in a package going forward, financed, and what's going to make you money. But what's going to move the needle beyond that? Our exploration. So this is the upper zone I was talking about, the higher grade. Here we call that the bonanza zone. Down here we call it the deep zone and we also have a dilatant zone. A dilatant zone is just a fat zone where that mineralization really widens significantly. This here gives you the distribution of the, of the different metals that we have. So as you can see, the silver's along the top, high, uh, and that's the precious metal. Of course, gold's a precious metal too, but one of the interesting things we find in our deposit, which is kind of a little unusual, is gold throughout. It's gold down at the bottom, quite heavy on the side here. Lead and zinc at the bottom and copper at the bottom as it's supposed to, as those are base metals. <coughs> Structurally, we've always found east-west structures. These, that's the Valdecanus vein. But what we're starting to see from a geological point of view is some intersections possibly of the gold here, as you can see, where we're thinking that we have some other structures that are north-south facing. This is just an idea of, of the whole, again, the, the bonanza zone and the dilatant zone. And what we think here is we have an upwelling fluid zone. So what we think is we have found the upwelling fluid source, the upwelling fluid zone for the region and all these veins that 
we're discovering and that Fresnillo has discovered too on their property. <clears throat> so we're up in that corner again, and this is from an exploration point of view what we're doing. There's potential of the Valdecanas vein coming along here and intersecting our property again. There are the north-south structures here. There's a, underneath the Valdecanas vein. And then these structures coming across east-west. As we go down the property, and our property is 16 kilometers from top to bottom, seven uh, from east to west, you can see there's a potential of these veins. And actually, the reason this is here is that Fresnillo has actually started to give uh, resources for some of these vein structures that they've actually found. This gives you an idea of the full property length and how much we've actually explored thus far. We have a $1.3 billion company and we've explored about 4% of our, our property. Now that's something nice to say, but what really makes it meaningful is when you get down to this area here where Fresnillo, just across that line, has discovered all these vein systems over here. So the likelihood that these vein systems are going to come over on this side, in our estimation, is pretty high. Since they're already mining this vein over here, called the Harias vein, which goes across into the Valdecanas vein, and that's the same vein, the likelihood that some of these are going to come across is very high. So what's going to move the needle for mag going forward? Of course, as we go closer and closer to production, and you remove more and more risk, and you show people that it's going to be developed on time and on budget, that does it, and that's just a, a natural, slow progression. But the other ways that we're going to add value and move the needle significantly is on geological discovery, which to this point is why MAG has the value that it has currently, is because we are high on discovery, and we've been very, very successful that way. So, uh, takeaway points for today's pr uh, uh, pr uh, presentation, excuse me. 550 gram uh, per ton silver, and that's silver alone. If you add in the gold and the lead and zinc into an equivalent, that goes over a kilo per ton. We have 502 uh, silver uh, ASIC equivalent. We've gone up to 4,000 tons a day. We have a 19-year mine life initially, and that will, we think, will grow. And we go into production in 2020. The, the evolution of the resource, the deep zone, has 7.5% lead zinc for 2.5 billion pounds of lead zinc. Uh, we have a copper credit coming in, 4,000 tons a day, and the second that lower deep zone goes into production in year six. From an exploration point of view, we have the deep zone extensions. That's just drilling where we are and going deeper. We have the northwest structures that I talked about, the new ones that we haven't explored yet. We have the, the east-west structures, and of course, we have Sessantoni off to the side. We have a 20,000 meter drill program this year, which we have a high um, confidence level that we'll be able to identify another discovery. We're covered by a lot of guys. If you uh, want to get really technical and read uh, 13 different reports from, uh, from people, but you can just choose a few out of here. But you can see that um, on an average target price, right now we're down. We've, we've come down over the year, so right now we've just started to turn that corner, we believe. Uh, we hit, uh, I think, about 14 bucks. We're about 15 something right now, and the average target price is considerably higher than that. From a shareholder point of view, we have very good support institutionally, and that's because these guys are really sophisticated, and they believe and understand that MAG has such a significant asset. So BlackRock, at 16%, uh, you can see these guys, Tocqueville, Van Eck, these are the guys who just financed us recently. We did a uh, non-broker deal for $48 million, and these guys all supported us in the, uh, in the financing. So we have a, a small float, not too many retail shareholders out there, but uh, we're always welcome more. And that's the presentation today for MAG. Thank you very much for coming. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them.